Body composition is something like, yeah, yeah, it's always nice to have, and you just do it, and you just measure the body fat, and yeah, lock it, so to speak, right? It's a little bit flying under the radar. Don't get me wrong, it's no offense against anybody. I'm just talking about my experience and common practice, what I've seen out there. But there are two, two three things with body composition beyond just you know, your, your fat, uh, fat value. When people talk about body composition, they often think, oh, it's about the body fat and how much fat do I have because I don't want to carry too much, too much body fat with me. Well, fair enough, you don't want to do that. But one thing often forgotten, we talked about lactate initially. Talked about lactate initially. And lactate is measured in a unit millimoles per liter. However, we don't even talk about the liters. In most cases, it's like, yeah, I have three millimoles, four millimoles, 10 millimoles, eight millimoles. No, it's millimoles per liter. It's a little bit ironic because if I talk about VO2, uh, everybody talks about per kg. And then the question comes up, how much kg, how much kilograms are there? When I talk about what's per kilogram, the question comes up, how many kilograms do you have? Same thing with the millimoles per liters. It's a normal division. However, nobody's asking for how many liters are there. So what I'm trying to talk about here, what I'm trying to tell you is that lactate dilutes in water. It's water soluble. And if you have an athlete with more fat, percentage-wise, more fat, that obviously means that percentage-wise body water is less. And vice versa, if you have an athlete with lower body fat, percentage-wise, the athlete has to have more body water. The same is true for somebody, for example, doing weight training in the gym. If you do weight training in the gym, you grow muscle mass. Muscle is approximately 75-78% water, which means you have more muscle, you have more water. Right? We just talked about how a lactate shuttles between muscles. Okay. So you can say, okay, well, why do I even care? Well, let me show you. You have different, in gender as well, different ranges of body fat. And what you see here is now how much body water is in approximately in there. And as you can see on the, on the very right column, if you have more body water, this changes how much space there is for the lactate dilutes, okay? Again, it's a lactate concentration. And you need to look, same as you look at the kilograms. If you want to have VO2 per kg or what per kg, you measure the kilograms. You measure lactate in millimoles per liter, but yeah, again, you need to take into account the liters. Let me show you as an example what this changes, okay? Just follow me with that one, please. Assume you have an athlete of 70 kilogram, and assume he has a body fat of 15% and a muscle mass of 40% and 65% water, which is common average values for a good trained athlete. What you can actually measure with your 200 bucks Tanita scale from Amazon, okay? In my example is the cyclists, or maybe it's a trial lead, but the exercise he's doing is, is cycling. And, um, you know, because of the muscle mass involved, and obviously he's losing not all the muscles in the body, he's losing 80 kilograms of muscle. And because of the fixed 65% water, according to the literature, he has approximately 33 liters of water where lactate dilutes. Okay, so the space where lactate dilutes is approximately 33 liters. Now we put him on the bike ergometer and we let him do some exercises. We let him ride for five minutes. And because of the intensity of the exercise, let's say he accumulates, this is a very simplified by the way, it's not correct, but uh, it's, it's a simplified way to show you the problem. Let's say he's accumulating 1.5 millimoles of lactate per minute. If he does that for five minutes, Right, it's five minutes multiplied by 1.5, multiplied by 18 kilograms, because we said one kilogram of muscle is accumulating 1.5, which means he is accumulating 132 millimoles of lactate. You divide this by 33 liter, and here you get your 4.1 millimoles. This is actually how the lactate concentration that you measure with your device at the yellow is, is composed, right? There is more than 100 millimoles of lactate produced in the muscle, but then it dilutes in the body. So this is why you can measure that's yellow. And then the concentration is lower, right? Okay, 4.1. This is how you get your normal lactate measurement value. Now, we take this, let's say, triathlete, and we put him into the gym. 
it's winter time coming up. Uh, we have been doing some upper body muscle, uh, body work, some upper, upper body work, also to improve the swimming, maybe it goes more swimming because of the weather outside, whatsoever. Let's say he gains a little bit, he gains two kilograms of upper body mass. He maybe loses some body fat. Long story short, his body composition changes. He didn't do any bike training. So with the same exercise, he is still accumulating 1.5 millimoles of lactate per minute. Okay? That stays the same lactate. But now because there is more dilution space, there's more muscle and more water, now the concentration is not 4.1 anymore. What you will get, you get a, sure, a, a shift of the lactate curve to the right. You have lower lactate values in your whole lactate profile test, and you say, wow, improvement, good improvement in the bike training. No, no improvement in the bike training, really. just more dilution. And by the way, one thing you need to remember with all these lactate profile tests, Dmax, four millimoles, I don't know, whatever you're doing there, resting lactate plus 1.5, deflection point plus one. They're all good. Most of them are validated against um, the macrolactate steady state, but it's always done with men. It's normally not done with females. And females per se, as you've seen in the table before, do have different uh, body compositions and therefore different lactate concentrations, always, which is most likely not taken into account. Another thing that comes out of body composition is glycogen. Glycogen is stored in the muscles. The more muscles you have, the more glycogen you have. The higher you train, the more glycogen you have. If you change your diet, more glycogen you have. It's obviously the most precious fuel, right? Um, if you haven't seen it, we have, I think, a very good um, blog article about it, why you need to think about glycogen that you have in your working muscles and not in the whole body, because it cannot um, transfer from, uh, um, you know, from upper body to lower body, for example. And what you can see here, sorry, I, di I, didn't, I didn't have the red circle um, for the full one, but look at the body fat, just a little bit above the red circle. Everything same is the same. 60 kilograms, 180 centimeters. One time is 15% body fat, one time is 25% body fat. Look at how much change you have in glycogen. And if you want to plan, race, pacing and fueling, 120 grams of glycogen, that's huge. That is an additional 30, 40 watts on the bike, because this is an hour longer running. So don't underestimate that, what you can do with good body composition data. 